um, I figured it might be useful to have a property that determines whether or not a high score was already set. So let's go ahead, public bool, uh, call it has, has high score. And it will simply return whether or not the high score is uh, greater than zero. Yep. So if the high score value is set to anything other than zero, actually, if it's greater than zero, then the has high score property will return true. So let's go ahead and also draw the high score if there is one so uh -uh. let's go into the draw method mm. and i guess the It will be exactly the same. The ever, the only thing that is different is the position of the high score um, value. So let's encapsulate this in a method and just reuse it for the high score value. Um, an easy way for this uh, to achieve this is to select all of this, right click, quick actions, extract method, and it will put all of this code in the method. Um, and let's call it um, draw score. And now we need to add a new um, parameter to this method. Let's call it score. And then instead of passing the display score property here, we're simply going to pass the score parameter. And then let's also um, define, uh, let's create a new argument here, a new parameter and call it, I don't know, um, start pos y, uh, start pos x. I don't know why I keep mixing up x and y. Uh, and instead of initializing the pos x with the actual um, x component of the position property we're going to use the the parameter here for that so now we can reuse this method to draw both score values both the high score and the current score um, so let's go here uh, score oh display score and the start position is position x so now it does exactly the same as before but now we can reuse it to also draw the high score so let's say if has high score draw score sprite batch high score and now we need to figure some position for that let's go with the x position actually um, let's use the x position for the high score and then here add the sum value to the position to the x position to or to draw the current score and let's go with maybe 80 so let's put it like this so first we check if there's a high score value set and if so we're going to pass this high score value to the draw score method and pass the current x position um, as the start position the render start position then we call the draw score method again, but this time we pass the display score 
And for the rendering position, for the start position, we pass the X position plus 80 pixels to render it slightly more to the right. Um, let's see if 80 is actually an okay value. Uh, and if I start it now, it should actually not render the uh, high score at all because has high score will be false. Uh, and obviously 80 is a, a bit much. Oh no, it's actually not. It's just that the value that we passed here, uh, here, uh, should be a bit lower, I guess. Let's go window width minus uh, 200. Start the game. Uh, it was a bit too much. Let's go maybe 150. Yeah, seems about right. So, um, let's actually set a high score and see if it draws properly. And let's say the high score is uh, a five digit value like uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're getting there. Uh, 80 is a bit much space between those. Uh, let's go back into the scoreboard class and let's not use 80 to reposition this. It's maybe say uh, 50. Start up the game again. Oh, that's a bit too close. Let's maybe say 60. Start it up again. Yeah, seems about right. I guess we can actually move the entire thing even slight, uh, slightly more to the right. Mm, let's go back into the game class here and let's say 140, I guess. So we kind of have to play around with these values a little. I don't know. Yeah, I guess this is okay. But I think the space between those could be uh, sl uh, slightly slightly larger. So let's go into the scoreboard class again and say plus 70. And that should be fine, right? Uh, am I missing something? All right, obviously that means that it, the entire thing is a little larger. So we need to Move it slightly to the left again. Let's say 70. And 130, and now that should be fine. Yeah, that's just perfect. Okay. So let's actually not hard code these values here. Let's actually um, define constants for those. So, Uh, let's say ba ba ba. Let's go up here and say ba ba ba. Private constant int mm. score board pos y equals window height. Oops, minus. 130 and score why do i keep mixing up y and x and it should be window width obviously i don't know i guess today there are two wires touching in my brain that shouldn't be touching i don't know um let's see pass this constant value here and this value should be 
10. Oh, just 10. Like this, right? So this should give us the same result. Perfect. And let's go into the scoreboard class and do the same thing here. Um, with this value, let's define a constant for that. Introduce constant for 70, yes. And let's call it um, score margin. Something like that. And we should be good. Perfect. Let's take another look here. So now, here we pass the x position plus the score margin constant, and that's fine. Um, but we also need to draw um, this text here that says high for high score. Um, yeah, so let's do that. And I guess, um, let's say, hmm. let's see, let's go, let's take a look at the texture here and let's um, check out the coordinates. I guess it's, just uh, twice the width of uh, the other digits here. But let's just directly use these values here. So 755, width is 19, height is 13. Um, let's say uh, texture quartz high x is seven fifty five and the y value is zero. The width is that should be fine and also it needs to um, we need to define a margin uh, let's say high text margin mm, and let's make this I don't know Maybe also 70 for now. And now what we're going to do is go into the draw method here. And before we do anything else, we want to use the sprite batch to draw the texture, of course, and the source rectangle will be Oops, ah, let's delete this again here. Yeah, so pass the texture, pass the position, which I guess uh, is a new vector where the X position is the current X position minus the high text margin and the Y position is simply um, the Y position. And then here, the source rectangle is a new rectangle. Um, and here we need to pass those constant values we just defined. Mm, texture chords high X, texture chords high Y, 
texture quartz high width. And I think we forgot the height. Which is also 13. We could just reuse this constant, but just to make it a little uh, cleaner or maybe uh, easier to read, I guess, uh, we're going to introduce a new constant and pass it here like this. Oops. And we need to also pass the tint color, which will be white. There we go. And yeah, I think, I think that should be it. Let's start up the game again. Okay, that is obviously... Uh, yeah, not quite right. <laughs> Let's see, what's wrong here? Yeah, first of all, we pass the number width instead of the actual width of the text. There we go. So that's one mistake. So now it should actually draw the entire text. That is correct. And the margin is way too large. Um, so let's actually set this to 10. Which is not enough. Uh, let's set it to 28. There we go. I guess this should be fine. So yeah, I'm 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 happy with how this looks. So yeah, that's great. Now let's actually we need to um, increase the score, obviously. And yeah, while the game is uh, playing, while the game is running, we need to increase the score um, according to the current speed of the T-Rex. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I just noticed that um, I did a uh, little mistake here. I passed the wrong uh, constant value here to the constructor of the rectangle in the draw method of the scoreboard, um, which obviously has no effect because the constant value is exactly the same. But uh, yeah, uh, I figured uh, it might make more sense to actually use the constant which we uh, declared earlier so here we go and that should fix it um, obviously if I start up the game it will not have any effect it will look exactly the same but uh, yeah okay so let's go ahead and um, uh make the score actually go up while the game is playing and um, here we kind of have to make a decision a decision um the question is what class should be responsible for increasing the score and keeping track of the score and stuff um one could argue that um the game class does it itself um so that the de <coughs> excuse me so that the game class would be responsible for increasing the score um but i kind of figure that the game class already does a lot and um to keep our code more organized and modular uh maybe we should either implement the behavior in the scoreboard class or have a new class like scoreboard manager, scoreboard handler or something um, that does that for us. Um, I think for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go with um, implementing the behavior inside the scoreboard class, this one, um, just to keep things simple. And I think we don't have to over design it and over complicate things. So um, that means that our scoreboard needs to be aware of the t-rex it needs to know the t-rex so it can um, use its speed property in order to update the score value and uh, that means 
we have we need a reference to our T-Rex instance. And um, for that, I'm going to add a new parameter to the scoreboard uh, constructor uh, of type T-Rex and name it T-Rex. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new field, which is also of type T-Rex and also named T-Rex. And then I will initialize the field here in the constructor using the T-Rex instance that was passed to it. Okay. Now, we can use this instance to slowly uh, increase the score depending on the speed. Now, let's go to the update method. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Here we could, well, basically, we need to We need to define how fast the um, we we need to come up with some sort of formula, some some sort of calculation for how the speed of the T Rex affects the the um, incremental value of the score. Um, let's see. Well, I guess. For now, let's do something like um, score plus equals T-Rex speed multiplied by, uh, I don't know. Let's say, what, what is the initial speed? It was like 200 or something? Yeah, the start speed is 240. Mm, let's go back to the scoreboard. Let's say it increases by a tenth of the speed per second. No, that's that's a little too low, right? Or is it? Let's let's try that. So, time uh, speed multiplied by zero point one multiplied by the total seconds that have elapsed. And we don't need to cast it since the score is actually a double. So. Uh, let's go back into the game class. And obviously this constructor call here no longer works because there's one argument missing, which is the T-Rex. So let's pass the T-Rex here. This instance here is passed to the constructor. Mm. And now we can actually comment out these two lines. So I'm going to highlight them and, and press Control K, Control C, which comments out the code. Mm. Let's start it up. Let's see if this actually it's a little fast, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I think our scoreboard is increasing way too fast. So maybe let's not go with a tenth, maybe let's say hmm. half of that. Yeah, that seems fair. Let's compare it to the original. I guess it's all right. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, right? So 
So yeah, I guess this is okay. So let's store this actually in a constant. Introduce constant and let's call it um, score increment multiplier, something like that. I guess this is fine. Let's fire it up again. Just want to check what we're at here. Oh, obviously, we also um, we don't need to render this high text here um, if there is no high score. So let's go back into the draw method and move this line here. If I hold down Alt and press the down arrow key, I can move it like this. So we only want to draw this if there is a high score. So let's fire it up again. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that seems about right. And yeah, what else? I guess we also need to make it so that um, over time the um, T-Rex becomes faster so that the further the game progresses um, the more difficult it gets but I don't think that's a priority right now that's I think we should focus on actually creating obstacles so that the game has an actual purpose so right now I'm get, basically getting points for free without actually doing anything. So yeah, let's take a look at the um, obstacle manager and obstacle classes here that we designed and actually implement them. Okay, so what we're going to need is um, one, two, three, four new classes. And one of those classes will be abstract because in a context where there are concrete obstacles um, called cactus group and flying dino or pterodactyl or whatever, uh, what is an obstacle? It's really just uh, a generalization um, that implements the shared behavior between these two different concrete types of obstacles. And yeah, so mm, let's see, what, what can we do first? I guess we should start with the abstract obstacle. So let's do that. Uh, let me let me gather my thoughts. Uh, into the entities folder, we're going to create a new class and call it obstacle. And this is going to be a public abstract class. And what abstract means is that um, it cannot be uh, instantiated. So calling a constructor doesn't work for that, uh, for this class. Um, it's just merely to provide the um, shared behavior between uh, all of the subclasses of this class. So yeah, let's, let's kind of take a minute to think about what we need. Um, Obviously, it needs to implement the iGameEntity interface. Let's create a stub. Implement interface, there we go. The draw order, I guess, could be constant as well. But let's actually just make it an uh, auto property. There we go. And remove these throw statements here and yeah well what do we need hmm well we could we could actually go ahead and create the obstacle manager class first now that we have a stub for the obstacle class guess that would be fine mm. 
Well, obviously the obstacle class needs a position property so that we can move it um, from the right-hand side of the screen to the left-hand side of the screen. And basically just in general, determine where it should be rendered. So yeah, let's go ahead, add a new property of type vector two and call it position. There we go. And also every obstacle is going to need a reference to the T-Rex uh, instance because we're going to need that for collision checks later on. So let's go ahead, create a new field of type T-Rex, name it T-Rex. There we go. And I'm going to double click this line or triple click actually right click quick actions generate constructor there we go and it automatically gives us a constructor that takes a t-rex object as its parameter and i'm actually going to cut and paste it down here because that's how i usually structure my classes okay um and you notice that is it is protected instead of public we could make it public but it actually doesn't make much sense because um since you cannot instantiate abstract classes anyway, um, the only way this it would make sense to call this constructor would be from a subclass in order to initialize uh, the parent class. So yeah, protected makes much more sense in this case. Mm, what else? I guess we could give it a start position. Uh, initialize the property like this. And, well, I guess it doesn't make sense to be able to set the posi position from outside of the class. Let's make it private. And... We could already go ahead and implement the update method because it's not that complicated. Really, all we need to do, I think, is update the position. Um, actually, let's declare a new variable here. Call it pos x. And that'll be the current position minus um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, let's let's just briefly take a look at the t-rex class here I just want to make sure uh, let's go into the update method here uh, yeah Okay, um, actually we just need to basically decrease the X component of the position um, according, I mean, according to the current speed. So let's go T-Rex speed, which is um, measured in pixels per second. So we should multiply this by the total number of seconds that have elapsed between frames and cast this to a float and then say position equals new position pos x and just pass the original y position here actually we could make this a float since we're never ever going to actually set the y position but never mind let's keep it let's keep it like this and this should already be enough logic to make it move from the right hand side of the screen to the left hand side um yeah that's fine mm, let's see what else all right uh we also need a sprite to render the obstacle and remember we defined a sprite 
uh, class here um, earlier. So, in no matter what we decide, we're going to need a sprite. So, obviously, we need to store that sprite somewhere. So let's create a protected field. Call it sprite, and we'll be off type sprite. I and mean, I think this is the wrong. Yeah, there's also a sprite class in the um, Sharp DX Direct 3D9 uh, namespace. Uh, uh, that's not the one we do, that we want to use. We want to use our own sp uh, sprite class, which is in the T-Rex Runner Graphics namespace. And the field is protected so that um, it is visible to subclasses of the obstacle class. And here in this in the draw method, we will simply draw the sprite. Uh, like this and uh, just to make sure that the sprite um, that if we forget to actually initialize the sprite in this in the subclass um, we need uh, I'm going to add this null conditional operator here so that if it's null um, the draw method will not be called and instead this entire expression here simply returns null and nothing will happen. Um, yeah, I guess that's all right. Let's not overcomplicate things. So let's go ahead and create the obstacle manager class. And this time I'm just going to go ahead and go up here and say public class obstacle manager and let me just take a quick look here right yep. uh, also implements the i game entity interface let's right click the interface name here and say quick actions implement interface to create some steps the draw order um, doesn't apply here actually because yeah there is nothing to draw for the actual uh, obstacle manager so let's just make it return zero so there we go and now I'm going to right click the obstacle manager say uh, quick actions and say move type to obstacle manager cs which moves it to a separate file i'm going to open that file and now let's take a look here now let's actually implement this oh no wait actually let's go to the obstacle class there's one more thing that we need to implement here um, later on we will have to check for collision um, between the obstacles and the player and in order for us to do that we need to basically check the coordinates on the field uh, on the screen um, of the t-rex and the obstacle and check if they overlap um, and since the cactus groups and the pterodactyls um, are of different sizes their uh, collision box their bounce on the screen where the collision would happen uh, is different uh, so let's go ahead and implement it this way let's create an abstract property of type rectangle and call it um, collision box and it will have it will only have a getter so this way we can implement it differently in each um, in each uh, concrete implementation of the abstract class um, you will see what I mean by that later on so let's just go ahead and go into the obstacle manager class for now and basically what the obstacle manager class needs to do is instantiate obstacles of the different types uh, place them in the actual game and keep track of them and 
in order for the obstacle manager to be able to do that it needs to be able to add new entities to the game and for that it's going to need an instance of the entity manager so let's go ahead create a field here now we'll make actually make that read only private read only entity manager call it entity manager there we go and i'm going to create a constructor that takes an object of type entity manager and yeah that's it and i guess it also needs a reference to the t-rex which i can also make read only there's no reason why it would ever change so it's fine i guess there we go and we're also going to need an instance of scoreboard because i figured that we can use the scoreboard in order to determine um, the distance that the t-rex has traveled so far um, since the score basically scales with the speed of the t-rex you kind of you can use it as an indicator of uh, yeah of, to 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 get the distance that the t-rex has already run so i'm going to add a new argument here oops scoreboard there we go going to store that in a field as well it could also be read only doesn't really make sense uh, doesn't really <laughs> make a difference uh, so yeah we're going to use the scoreboard in order to determine the distance that a t-rex has already traveled and this way we can basically based on the distance um, spawn our actual obstacles if that makes sense we need to be able to turn the obstacle manager on and off so to speak because doesn't need to spawn obstacles right away um, we need to be able to enable and disable it so let's create a property and call it is enabled and we don't need to initialize that via the constructor it's fine so the default value will be false yeah this way we're what we're going to do is basically here we're going to say if not if it's not enabled then do nothing simply return and i guess we can actually leave it like that mm, a draw method is not going to do anything i guess and um let's see We're going to need an instance of random in order to, well, generate random numbers. And let's initialize that here in the constructor, like that. Mm, what else? Yeah. Um, we're going to need to define the minimum distance that the T-Rex needs to have traveled in order for the obstacle manager to start spawning obstacles. So let's go ahead, private constant uh, float. Uh, min spawn distance 
and let's say 80 maybe or maybe less so basically that would mean you get 80 points for free every time because there won't be any obstacles spawning before that so maybe let's decrease this a little let's say 20 and let's see what else Well, we need to define a minimum and maximum distance between each of the obstacles, I guess. So, let's see. I guess it could be an integer. Obstacle distance. So I don't know. So this will be in pixels. So the space between obstacles has to be a minimum of, I don't know, 80 pixels. We're going to have to play around with these values anyway. I guess 80 is not enough. Let's say 100 for now. But we'll have to. We have to fiddle with these values anyway so so the maximum distance between obstacles should be let's say 500 maybe for now and let's go ahead what else what else do we need 